By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back with X Points action right here on Timmy Talks. We have reached final number 27 and this video is all about that final. So we have a Wrath of God deck. So it's white, it's got some artifacts and it's taking on a Troll Wreck deck which is red and black. So it's really interesting to see these decks and to kind of see where the format is now, especially for me since I don't play X Points that often and when I do it's usually very, very casual. So it's always interesting for me to kind of dive into these finals and see what the top decks of the format currently are. Now, before I go start with the deck decks, I would just first uh, like to look at the current points list. So here you see the current points uh, list of 2023. So just a, a little refresher here. When you play X points, you can spend 10 points on making your deck on cards that have points allocated to them. So here you can see the points list. For example, if I want to play all the Moxen, that's fine, but then you've spent all your 10 points. So you cannot play, for example, with Mitchell's Factory or you know with him to Turek if you go that route. So you really got to think about how am I going to spend the points. And then um, they have the points and then the rule set is Atlantic Rules. So that means that you can play, for example, with four Mitchell's Workshops and that this format also has Mana Burn and it has Fallen Empire. Now, um, now that you're a little bit informed, if you want to know more, by the way, check out the description below because there you can find a link to the X Points community and you can read more about the rules there on their Facebook page. These are free tournaments. So if you enjoy this format, you can join them for free, which I think is super cool. So just a shout out to Luki for coming up with this format and for organizing everything. I think it really shows your love for old school magic. It is fantastic. Now I'm gonna continue with uh, the deck text. Oh wait, but before I do that, this is what I always say, right? If you wanna go straight to the games, because I know some people do, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the game action. Uh, and for here, we are going to continue with the deck text. I'm gonna start with uh, the deck the Wrath of God deck, I think. Yeah, let's start with that deck. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of William, Wrath of the Machine. So this deck is really built around Wrath of God, right? And I think when I'm looking at this list, it shows where X Points is at now. I mean, you can build a deck with four Swords to Plows tiers, four Wrath of Gods, and include three Maze of If. So that's mega anti-creature tech. And apparently you've got enough targets that it's all worth it, right? You're, you're putting 11 slots in uh, you know, devoted to stopping creatures. Now, what I really like about this deck, by the way, is Maze of If, Wrath of God. I think it's a really good combination because, you know, Maze of If, of course, a land from the dark, you can tap it and then target attacking creature is taken out of combat and deals no damage anymore. And you can do that also after damage is assigned, by the way. Uh, but it's a really good card because if you play this out, you're kind of telling to your opponent, okay, if you cannot answer my maze, it means you've got to play out a second creature if you want to deal damage to me. Now, the more you, of course, commit to the board, to your opponent, the better your Wrath of God gets. So Maze of If is really a clever way to force your opponent to play out more threats. Now, like I said, he's also playing with four Swords to Plowshares, which is, of course, great in the early games. In the early game, you can kind of negate the threats with your Swords to Plowshares and with your... Um, uh, your Maze of If, right? And then later in the game, those Wrath of Gods become really good. Now, when you're playing Wrath of God, it goes together really well with Mishra's Factory because, of course, with Mishra's Factory, it is a land until you animate it into an assembly worker. So as long as you don't do that, you can play Wrath, Wrath all the creatures. After the Wrath has been resolved, you can animate your Factory and you can attack. And that same trick also works with Jade Statue. So we see two Jade Statues here in the deck. I'm a little bit surprised we don't even see four Jade Statues in the deck. I think that probably Sarah Angel is just too good of a creature not to play. It's of course a creature that, you know, the 4-4 flyer that you don't have to tap when it attacks. Arguably the best creature perhaps in old school. And, um, you know, you still choose it. it. It does fit really nicely into the mana curve, right? Because Wrath of God is 4, Sarah Angel is 5. So, and I remember decks that people used to play when I was a young Timmy, when they usually played Resurrection together with Wrath and it would usually resurrect back the Sarah Angel, which I think is super flavorful, but I guess you don't even need resurrection in this. I mean, you're of course the one who's timing when you want to play out the Wrath of God and not your opponent. So that's of course key uh, when you're playing with creatures that are also hit by your own Wrath. Now then we also see three trikes talking about potentially the best creature in old school, Triskelion, and of course, Insane. Now this list is very controlling, so you don't mind about the six casting cost. You're gonna get there. I mean, look at all the answers for creature threats. I guess the deck is a little bit vulnerable to uh, non-creature decks, especially 
uh, pre-sideboard because, you know, if you're playing against an opponent who's playing a non-creature strategy, then all of a sudden you've got 11 cards in your deck that are worth absolutely nothing. So that's kind of interesting. And again, it shows a lot to where the X-Points format is. I don't know how many uh, creatureless decks are there. Maybe if there are some X-Points experts watching this video, could you let me know in the comments below? Because it seems to me they're probably not a lot if you can like build a deck like this and get all the way to the finals. Uh, it's super controlling, right? And it's really good at stopping creatures. Also check out those four GM Day Tomes showing how extremely controlling it is. And you don't even need blue. I mean, this is just mono white, right? Really cool deck, really nice to see. So thank you, William, for bringing it here to the table. And you've made it all the way to the finals. And I'm looking forward to see it in action. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Nikolai. So this is really another famous X-Points deck, right? You see these decks quite a lot, that discard strategy, because of course you've got the access to the Hymn to Turex, uh, and in this case also the Mind Twist, even though Mind Twist is four points, right, to play in your deck. So you really got to think about that. And here on the deck photo, you can see what cards have points on them. So he went for four Hymns, one Mind Twist, and a Mox Ruby. So that means, for example, that you cannot play with the Mishra's Factories, which I think is understandable in this deck. You don't really need them. This is really a discard strategy, right? Him to Turek, of course, the famous card from Fallen Empires, two black to cast, and then your opponent has to discard two cards. So it's a super good, uh, super good card. We also see a Scepter that will also help with discarding. We, of course, see the Mind Twist. And then we also see two Mind Step Thralls, which I think is super cool. So Mind Step Thrall is a 2-2 creature, and when it attacks and is not blocked, you can choose to sacrifice it, and then it won't deal damage, and your opponent has to discard three cards. So that could be a huge hit. And um, I'm actually looking forward, Nikolai. I hope you can force him to discard cards with your Mind Step Thrall. That would be super fun, you know, because I'm not a big fan of, di of discard strategies simply because I enjoy having cards in my hand, so it's tough to play against it. Um, but if you discard my hand through a Mind Step Thrall, I respect that, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, that's a good move. Um, we, of course, see in these decks uh, the card The Wreck, right? The Wreck is like Black Vice reversed. So what it does, you, you take a damage for each card under the three that you have in hand. So if you have two cards in hand, you take one damage. If you have one card in hand, you take two damage. And this happens during your upkeep. And if you have no cards in hand, you take three damage, right? So the goal, of course, is to discard the hand of your opponent as quickly as you can, play out the wreck, and then, you know, he's going to take a lot of damage and he will die to that. Now, obviously, cards like Hypnotic Spectre also work really great with this uh, strategy. What I find quite interesting here is that he only went for two Dark Rituals. I guess it's always tough, like, to find spaces, right, for, for the cards in your deck. But with a deck like this, my first instinct would be to always go for four Rituals. But again, I never play these decks and I've never made it to a Finals of X Points, but I'm just saying what my instincts tell me to do, which would be to play four Rituals, because then you can play out your Hippie turn one, which I know is risky, because if your opponent has a Swords, and William has probably a Swords, you know, it's a two for one, but still, if he doesn't, you know, it's a great way, an unanswered Hippie usually wins you the game, and also you can use your Dark Ritual to potentially play a Sinkhole and a, a Hymn to Turek in turn two, like you can play both of those spells, and that would really wreck your opponent can you imagine you know of course with sinkhole you take away one of the lands and then maybe with the him if you also hit at least a, a land in his hand then maybe he's going to be mana screwed and that's usually the win later in the game although of course a mana screw means he's probably has a full hand doesn't go together that well with the wreck on the other hand there's enough discard in here it'll work um i also like the inclusion by the way of that single guardian beast uh, nikolai that's pretty cool with of course that chaos orb you can flip endlessly so that is is pretty heavy and i love i really love the lady orca in the deck you've got to tell me the story behind the lady orca it's got to be one of your pet cards uh or else it wouldn't be in this deck absolutely fantastic to see it here now lady orca she's not the best card in the world but she's super cool and she's a seven four and also a demon and you know i mean she hits for seven if you can keep the board clean and you can just attack I mean, it works, so really nice. It's it's a Thrall Wreck deck, but I see some really cool cards and different choices that you've made. So uh, so it's quite interesting, and I'm looking forward to see it in action against uh, the Machine deck, the Wrath of the Machine deck of your opponent, William. We've looked at that deck as well. I think they're both very different strategies, and that's probably going to make it a fun final. So let's go to finals number 27 between William and Nikolai. Here we go. Game number one, here we go. So we've got William at the top and at the bottom, we've got Nikolai playing with Thrall Wreck, black and red, and William playing with a mono white, 
very controlling list. It's called Wrath of the Machines. It's got Wrath of Gods, Swords to Plowshares, Mazes of If, and of course Nikolai playing the discard game here. Oh, there's not a him to Turek though. There's a sinkhole. So taking care of the land here, passing the turn back to William, who's got a nice scrubland playmat. And he also has that nice Jade Statue statue. <laughs> and he's also playing with Jade Statues today too, I believe. And both players still on 20. So this is the finals of X points, number 27. There's the first hint to Turek. We do see some glitches on the screen. So hopefully that won't be, uh, we won't see that too often because it's a little bit annoying. Anyway, we see here the uh, discard. Of course, hint to Turek, a discard is at random. Two lands taken away. That can actually be quite good for Nikolai here. And that one uh, Mishra's factory there hitting the board. There is a desert animating it, attacking for two here. So uh, Nikolai gonna drop to 18. He's gonna draw a card for turn, five cards in hand. And five cards in hand for William as well, it seems. And he's putting it back, passing the turn. Untapping there so he can attack again for two. There is a planes hitting the board. Attack for two, Nikolai dropping here to 16. And Nikolai kind of stuck there on black mana, by the way. Remember his deck is red and black. So he had a good start with the single and the him, but it's kind of stopping after, after that. Perhaps he's got a handful of red cards and needs to find a mountain. Five cards in hand, 16, passing the turn. Back to William, it seems. So really giving William time to get back into the game. And remember with William's deck, his deck only gets better. You know, the longer the game takes. He's playing with the four tomes. He's playing with the rafts. He's playing with the bigger creatures like the Sarah Angels and the Trikes. Again, an attack for two. I mean, the factory sometimes just do a lot of work. Already six damage in from that one Mishra's factory. And for William, it's just kind of sitting back, dealing some damage and, you know, passing the turn. Ideally, you can find some more lands and, and play a book. Here we see a Swamp number four for Nikolai tapping three. There's a Disrupting Scepter. So that Scepter could start doing some damage. Of course, William playing with white, so he does play with Disenchants and with Divine Offerings. Divine Offerings are going to get him uh, get him three life as well. The card from Legends that sees more and more play. So William going up to 23. There's the first maze. And gonna tap the Desert and the Plains for a Felwer Stone. And gonna animate the Factory Swing in for two more points of damage. Eight damage alone done with that Mishra's Factory. That Assembly Worker is Employee of the Month for sure. Let's see what Nikolai can do. Tapping four. There's the Guardian Beast. Okay, so Guardian Beast, that's a good thing about Guardian Beast. It's a good card because of its ability, but it's also a 2-4 creature for four, which is pretty okay as well. I mean, it can stop the Factories. So there we see another Plains by William. Now I wonder if William has a Wrath and if he wants to play it. Oh, he's got a Sarah Angel. That's probably even better because it flies over the Guardian Beast. Two cards in hand, by the way, for William and five cards in hand for Nikolai going to six here. So tapping two, there's a Chaos Orb. And oh wait, oh, this took a moment for me to realize, of course, now we have Chaos Orb and Guardian Beast. Oh man, this is so incredibly deadly. Oh man, Chaos Orb and Guardian Beast. And it's a hit, and I remember the way this works is, because of Guardian Beast, it's not destroyed, it comes back on the battlefield tapped, and Nikolai can use it again the next turn. For some strange reason though, he's putting it in the graveyard. Because the whole combo, of course, exactly now is putting it back, is Guardian Beast Chaos Orb. This is, I believe, a proxy, by the way. And in X, X points, I think proxies are allowed. So if you want to know more about the, the rule sets, please check out the description below. Okay, here we see a Wrath of God. So this Wrath is really important for William. There's a Disenchant also on the Chaos Orb. So this is the perfect answer by William. For a moment there, I thought, okay, is Nikolai going to dominate with this Guardian Beast uh, 
Chaos Orb uh, combo here, but that's not the case. Double the rack. Ooh, wow. And William on one card. That means he's going to take four points of damage. So he's going to untap. So he's taking a point of damage for each card under the three. So he's only got one card. So he's taking the damage here, taking the pain. Double rack. But he's set on a pretty high life total. So he's now on 19 after the damage. Going to attack, swing in. Nikolai on three at the moment. Sorry, on 10, of course, the three is his hand size, so he's on 10 life. There's a mind step throw. So a 2-2 creature, and when it deals damage, you can choose to sacrifice it, and then deals no damage anymore. That's uh, combat damage. And then you force your opponent to discard. Now again, some damage here for William. But it's not too problematic for him, though. There we see a trike. So coming in with three plus one plus one counters, a 4-4 four, four now. I wonder if he's going to shoot the Thrall so he can make space to attack with his uh, factory as well. It's not really necessary, I guess. Let's see if William can do anything. He still hasn't found any mountains, by the way. Nikolai, I mean, if Nikolai can do anything. He still hasn't found any mountains, so that must be really, really annoying for him here in the finals. What I constantly have is that feeling with Nikolai, he just needs that push, you know, when he, you know, he came back kind of with that flip and guardian beast moment, uh, but he still cannot find the red sources. There's the attack with the trike 4-4. Four, four. And Nikolai taking the damage here, dropping to six. Ah, that's really tough for him. So next turn, he'll be forced to chum block with the mind step throw. Let's hope for him that he can find something here in game number one of finals 27 of X points. Gonna tap two black. If it's another him, I mean, it's good, but it's not going to save him. There we see a sinkhole on the maze, probably, or on the factory. Probably on the factory here, exactly. So on that factory, which is important. The factory did a lot of work, by the way. And uh, William, not taking any damage anymore, it seems. Has enough cards in hand. There's the attack, the 4-4. Has to chump here, because if he takes 4, he goes to 2, and then William can kill him with the counters from the trike. So this is the last turn for Nikolai. He needs a little miracle here. He's on six. Just playing a swamp, passing the turn, it seems. Oh, that is unfortunate for him. I think there's little he can do here. So William exactly taking game number one here. And uh, yeah, Nikolai very unfortunate, not finding any mountains. Now both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we are going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's Nikolai on the play after losing that first one. Let's see if he can find some red mana. He can, there's a bad lance. So at least he found red now. I mean, red would, would have given him access to a bolt on that factory, for example. That was dealing so much damage in game one. Anyway, let's look at game number two here. Good start from Will William as well here with a soul ring turn one. So he can ramp it up. There we see another bat lance tapping two. There's the him to Turek again. So this is a good start for Nikolai. See William shuffling up, so he's gonna lose two cards at random. Let's see what he's gonna lose. There is a Karakas, I believe, and a Juggernaut. So the Juggernaut would have been a pretty nice play for him here, uh, turn two. Slam a land down, tap out and play a Juggernaut. I mean, it's not the aggressive strategy that I think William has in most games, but in this case, it would have really worked for him. So that was a good discard for Nikolai. There's a Felwer Stone. So no Sinkhole, no Hypnotic Spectre, and no him to Turex for Nikolai. So that's good news for William. Finding another factory here. He could try to swing in. It's a bit risky with the bolts. So he's gonna animate, he's gonna attack. He can pump it up for three because of that other factory. But there's the bolt probably, yep, there's the lightning bolt. And I think William is willing to take this risk because he has that soul ring and maybe he's got more lands in hand. And Nikolai here taking his turn. Let's see what he can do. We haven't seen the single set troll, for example. Tapping two. Are we going to see a sinkhole or a him here for two? No, another Felwer Stone. And just a pass. So two cards in hand for Nikolai, four or five cards perhaps even for William. 
And both players still on 20. There's another factory. I mean, those factories are doing so much work. Attacking again. Are we going to see another bolt? And then Will William already putting the, uh, the factory away here. So that's another bolt. So at least that's good for Nikolai, you know. Then you can kind of destroy lands that way. Kind of slow down your opponent as well. And you're not taking any damage. It's really a win-win. And here we see a sinkhole on the other factory. So already three factories in the bin here. So only one left in the deck of uh, William here. There's a desert and a pass. So no tomes. I really expected to see a lot of uh, JM Dea tomes here. We haven't seen a single one. It's a full play set in the deck of uh, William. Just a pass here by Nikolai. Two cards in hand. So both players just kind of dropping lands, waiting for the coast to be clear or finding a creature. We don't see a Sarah Angel. We don't see an Hypnotic Spectre. No Mind Step Thrall. There's a tap for three. Ooh, there is a Blood Moon. And that Blood Moon is, of course, really useful against the factories and against the mazes and against that single desert. There's a pass. Okay, there's a Jade Statue. So Jade Statue, a card for four. It's just an artifact. But you can animate it, you can turn it into a 3-6 creature. And then of course block and attack with it. So it goes together really well with Wrath of God because you Wrath and it's just an artifact. And when the Wrath has been resolved, you go to combat and you attack with it. So it's really an old school combo actually. And let's see what uh, Nikolai can do. Three cards in hand, passing the turn. Tapping six here, there's a trike. Yeah, and this is the problem for, for Nikolai in this matchup. Like, the longer the game takes, it's actually really good for William. And William having the bigger creatures with kind of more value, that's just kind of tough for William here. He does have a Shatter, though. So he's going to tap the two Flower Stones, cast a Shatter. It looks like on the Trike. Then, of course, he can deal three damage to Nikolai. So that's the first damage dealt here in game number two. Nikolai dropping to 17. And now he's going to take his turn. Of course, uh, Shatter being an instant, you can do that. And I mean, so far, Nikolai has all the answers. If he can just now find, for example, a Hypnotic Spectre to kind of force William to discard. There's the Hippie. Now let's see if it sticks. Remember, four swords in the deck of William and four Wrath of Gods. And of course, he's also playing with Maze of If. But those Mazes, they're just not really good with the Blood Moon on the battlefield. There's an animate and then attack for three, it seems. And Nikolai probably just going to take the damage here, exactly dropping here to 14. There's the pass. I wonder if William has that swords to plowshares. There's the attack. There's the tap. Are we going to see the swords? There's the swords. <laughs> you, you know it's going to happen, but if it doesn't, you know, I think with the Hypnotic Spectre, I always think, okay, you know, it's probably just going to be a trade for a sword or a bolt. But if I'm lucky, you know, and then it can dominate. Like an unanswered hippie can, can dominate a game. But anyway, it's gone now. It does mean two more life for Nikolai. He's going to go up to 16. He's got two cards in hand, passing the turn. That means that William can animate his statue again and attack. So a 3-6 here. It's really tough to deal with that 6 toughness, by the way. And uh, it looks like he's going to take more damage. He's going to drop to 13. And then Nikolai is going to take his turn. He's looking for an answer to that statue. Looks like he's going to tap two black. What are we going to see? There's another him. So three cards in hand still for William. But he's going to lose two at random. And let's see what he's going to lose. So Wrath of God, any sort of plowshares. And I think what you want if you're William is... Okay, there's the Rack, so to deal some damage. If you're William, you want to try to find a gem they told him, right? To kind of refill that, uh, that hand. But it's not too concerning because Nikolai's on 13. He's got the Jade Statue to attack with. And only one card in hand for Nikolai. That's, I wonder what that one card is. So uh, William here dropping to 18. There's the attack. There's a shatter. Okay, so that's that one card. That's actually quite good. 
because it means William has no more pressure on the board, but is taking a little bit of damage from the rack. I believe he's got uh, one card in hand. That means two points of damage next turn. Oh, here's a Scepter. So we've got Disrupting Scepter and the rack. That is the combo. And we don't see a rack activation. That's really, or a Disrupting Scepter activation. That really surprises me. He wants to use it now, but you can't do that because you have to use Disrupting Scepter at sorcery speed. You can only use it in your own turn. But perhaps he said, oh, sorry, forgot it. I'm going to do it at my end step. Of course, we don't hear the audio of the players. And uh, so he's probably doing it in his own turn. But for a moment there, it looked like he did it in William's upkeep. Anyway, this is a really good situation for Nikolai to be in. I mean, that Scepter is doing work. And it's really nice to see Disrupting Scepter and the Rack here together being used. Very old school. There we see a Black Knight 2-2 two -two First Striker. It's going to deal some additional points of damage here for William. And of course, the protection from white is really good because it means that only Wrath of God can take care of this. Or, of course, one of his artifact creatures like Trike or the Jade Statue. But, I mean, you cannot Swords it. Maze is not working because of the Blood Moon. So, Nikolai is actually in a really good position here. Can now attack with the Knight, deal extra points of damage. There we see a Gloom. Okay. That Gloom is going to make it really tough for William to, for example, play out a uh, Sarah Angel. He does have enough mana to play out Wrath of God, because uh, what Gloom does, you've got to pay three extra for all your white spells. So Wrath of God is now seven mana instead of four mana. No cards in hand for Nikolai anymore. Two cards in hand for William. Going to tap four. Are we going to see a Jade Statue or a Wrath of God? A juggernaut, okay. I mean, that is an interesting thing to, to deal with for Nikolai. He needs like a creature. If he has another Black Knight, that would be ideal. But if he doesn't, I wonder what he's going to do next turn. First using the Scepter. Nikolai, oh, losing his Spirit Link. It surprises me a little bit that Nikolai or William didn't put the Spirit Link on a juggernaut. Probably wanted to force... Nikolai to use that scepter because, of course, it does take three mana. There's a Sorceress Queen. Okay, so that Queen is going to be really useful. Not the upcoming turn, but the turn after it's going to be Grant. So I think if you're Nikolai, you probably just want to take five more points of damage for now. Go to eight. And next turn, you can start using your, uh, your Sorcerer. And, oh, William's already saying, that's it. I'm not going to win this anymore. I would have loved to kind of see that Sorceress Queen in action. But um, I guess this is the end of game number two. That does mean it's a 1-1, one, one, and I'm excited about a 1-1 one, one because it means we're going to game number three of the finals of X-Points 27. Game number three, here we go. So who's going to crown himself the champion of X-Points 27? Will it be Nikolai or William? William currently on the play, so does that make him a slight favorite? Maybe. But uh, we've seen both decks work really well. So, I mean, it's all about, are you getting the right cards at the right time, right? Nikolai starting with the basic swamp, passing the turn over to William, who's got again that factory. And let's see if William can find a red source and a bolt, because that worked really, really well in, uh, in game uh, number two. But here we see another swamp tapping both. Are we going to see a him? No, we're going to see a Black Knight. Black Knight, of course, a great blocker for the, uh, for the factory. There we see another planes here. And no attack, of course, just a pass. There is another Badlands. And the fact that Nikolai is playing at main kind of shows. Oh, this is interesting. This attack is kind of signaling to William that uh, Nikolai has a bolt in hand. But what I wanted to say about the Black Knight. Oh, there we see a sinkhole. He's gonna, interesting, so he's gonna take care of the factory. I think if you have a bolt in hand, perhaps I would go for the planes instead. I don't know. Then again, you know, he is playing with four factories and they're super good. But what I wanted to say is if you play Black Knight main, which he is, it shows how many swords to plowshares there are in old school. Maybe creatures with protection from white should see more play. For, exact, uh, for example, the Mountain Yeti. There's the attack for two. Because you see so many swords to plowshares. So I think it's a good medical to play it main. There's a Mind Step Thrall here. 2-2, two, two, card from Fallen Empires. This is uh, art by uh, Richard Kane Ferguson, by the way. There we see that Swords we talked about. I want to explain the card, but it's already sourced. It's off to the countryside. Let's see what William can do. Just passing the turn. That's good news for Nikolai. 
We can just hit again for two. Gonna put uh, William here on 14. There's another mind step throw. So mind step throws are 2 2 when it attacks and it deals combat damage. I still cannot explain it. Again, sword to plowshares. We have to wait for another mind step throw. I think we're not gonna see it though, because Nikolai is only playing two, I believe, in his deck. But William not really doing much, cannot find the lands he needs. His deck is really, like, needs a lot of land. If he can find land number four, he can start playing a Wrath of God, and that would kill the Black Knight. And here we see William dropping to 12. And remember, this is a deciding game here. Game number three, the winner of this is the winner of X points number 27. And if you would like to join X points, by the way, it's completely free. It's a free tournament. Um, I, I'll leave a link in the description below to their Facebook group. There's a Hypnotic Spectre here, 2-2 Flyer. When it deals combat damage, you have to discard a card at random. There is a Desert, so if you would have a second Desert, there's a Spirit Link on the Hypnotic Spectre. It's not gonna work though, because you first take damage and then gain life. I mean, you don't, I guess you still gain the life. In that sense, it's working, but it's not working in the sense that you still have to discard a card. It doesn't prevent that from happening. Tapping two black. What are we going to see here? Perhaps a him, perhaps a sinkhole, perhaps a felver stone, perhaps another black knight. So many things he can cast for two black. So four cards in hand, 24 life for Nikolai, five cards in hand for William with 12 life. So I think they're discussing here the rules with the spirit link. So as far as I know, like I said, it first deals damage, so then you have to discard, and then you gain the life. But perhaps these players think otherwise, or they're looking it up at the moment. It is, of course, pretty decisive here, because, I mean, if you have a working hippie to empty the hand of William, that is huge. He is attacking here with both, so I guess they have figured it out. So William gonna take four points of damage, gonna go to eight, then go two back up, gonna go to 10, but he does have to discard. So it's really nice to see that both players taking a moment to discuss the rules and make sure they're following the rules. It can, it can be quite confusing. And then Nikolai here, second main, playing a Chaos Orb. Three cards in hand, and just passing the turn. Yeah, it's looking really good for Nikolai at the moment. Then again, one Wrath of God and the tables have turned again and William finally is finding some lands. Now remember, you can respond on the Chaos Orb activation with a Disenchant. So that's something that w William probably has in the back of his mind as well. For example, if he has a Jam Day Tome in hand, he's probably not going to play it out unless he wants to lure out, of course, a Chaos Orb activation. There we see a Sarah Angel, right? So this is really a juicy target for the Chaos Orb. So he's kind of signaling here to Nikolai, you know what? If you want to destroy it, it's going to cost you the orb. And if you, if you don't, then you cannot attack with the Hippie, also fine. So Nikolai is going to flip here, of course. That's what I would do. Now this is a flip in the final, so it's always extra tension. There he goes. Will it be a hit? And it's a hit. It was a, it's a really nice flip, by the way. Well done. So the Sarah Angel is gone. Gone up to heaven, which is kind of funny because it's an angel. So it already was up there, I guess. But it went back down for a short visit. Now it's back up again. And there's, of course, the attack after that. So William going to lose another card. I don't think there's a Raph in there else who would have played it out already. There's a disenchant. So he did have that disenchant. So he chose to go for that line, Sarah Angel, instead of waiting for it. Oh, look at that double sinkhole. William losing here two planes. That's unfortunate because what if he now top decks, for example, a Wrath? He cannot play it out. And a Wrath of God will really bring him back into the game. And look at that. He's saying, you got this. 
He's still an 8 though, right? There's no need yet to concede, or is there? Anyway, Nikolai, congratulations winning here against William. Well, well done. And a big thank you to both of the players for uh, showing their skills here on uh, Timmy Talks. It's always fun to kind of watch these X-Points finals, see where the format is going. And again, I apologize if I'm not that knowledgeable when it comes to X-Points. I don't play it that often, but it is fun to look at it. I do like the format, how open it is for a lot of players with a limited uh, card pool. It's really cool. And like I said, you can join these tournaments for free. Please check out the description below. They also have their own YouTube channel, by the way, where you can see more X-Points matches. So yeah, I'll, I'll just put all that information in the description below. There you can find it. Now, before you go, I'd like to ask you to do a few things to support the channel while we look at the winning deck here, the uh, Thrall Wreck deck by Nikolai. I would like to ask you to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are completely free and really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you, and now that is out of the way, I would also like to talk to you about the Timmy Talks Patreon program, where you can become a patron of the show. If you enjoy my channel and if you like what I do, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show. It already starts with just $1 a month, and for that dollar, you're supporting me as a content creator, so you're helping me to keep doing what I love to do for you guys, which is make videos, but you also get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can play in the Timmy Talks tournaments that I organize, you know, every, Two months three months we do like fun stuff online so you can join those and of course your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video including this one let's take a look at the end scroll Ik het is, ik het is, somber gezien.